Um, Actually, Will and I are, are, are good friends. Okay. Well, I've tried to get as, Will on here, by as, the way. As Will has often said, he said, uh, who else can I talk about? <laughs> you know, who else can I talk with about this? <laughs> Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. Historian Will Bagley published a book about the Mountain Meadows Massacre in 2002 called Blood of the Prophets. A few years later, and in 2008, Richard Turley published his account of the massacre at Mountain Meadows, and he also published some collected legal papers in 2017. I asked Will what he thought of Turley's scholarship and was a little bit surprised at his answer. You won't want to miss this conversation. Check mm -hmm. it out. I also want to mention that I'm giving away one of Will's books, um, The Whites Want Everything. And so if you'd like a free copy of this book, which has been autographed by Will Bagley, by the way, sign up at gospeltangents.com slash Bagley, and you'll have a chance to win this book. So sign up by October 12th. We'll have the drawing shortly after that, and uh, so you won't want to miss it. Check out a conversation. As far as my theory about um, why did Brigham Young become involved in, the, in ordering a massacre? Well, Ron Walker puts a footnote in his typically elliptical style in his book on the Godby Eyes that sort of implies that he thought of it before I did. <laughs> Who thought of it first? Ron Walker. Ron, Ron Walker thought of... I'm getting confused. Okay. More books. <laughs> oh, where do I have it? There we go. Oh. This Ronald W. Walker, okay. <laughs> the guy who actually wrote this book. So that's and the one he co-wrote with Rick Turley, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> Should we get and, your opinion of that book? I'm, I'm curious. Um, it's just part of the cover-up. It's just part of the standard story. Okay. I, I, I said to... I went into Bill Slaughter's office at Church Archives. And you can look out and you can see all of the old church archives. And it was after Blood of the Prophets had come out. And they were saying that they were going to have their book out next year. But I said to Bill, you know, I think you can uh, throw enough dirt in the air about whether to bring in word the massacre or not. But you can't avoid the cover-up. Okay. The cover-up is too damn well documented in the most impeccable Mormon sources, as Juanita Brooks said. And Bill looks off in the distance and he goes, we got our story and we're sticking to it. <laughs> Which is the best summary of what, what the, Mountain Meadows, the church's Mountain Meadows books are going to be about. They got their story, which was cooked up for H.H. H. Bancroft in the 1870s, and they're sticking to it. <laughs> and this, the story is Brigham Young wasn't involved. I mean, isn't, isn't that what oh, you're talking about? He, he would have been horrified at the whole idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> and then he didn't know about it for 20 years, and so, and when he did know about it, he excommunicated people. No, no, no. Simply not true. <laughs> But the thing about the massacre at Mountain Meadows is, when does it stop? The day after the massacre. It has a coda in which they convict John D. Lee and put all the blame on him. But it's, it, it's, a, it, it, it's, it's an act of histori historical deception to not address the entire story. Well, that's what part two is supposed to be coming out, which hopefully is next year. That's, that's, at least that's okay, what I believe Okay, remember? Is Rick Turley's father said to me, when's his book coming out? In about 2006. And it had been five years. And remember, they had announced in 2001 that they would have their book out next year. And 2001 is when you published your book, right? 2002. Oh, you published yours in 2002. Yeah. But, no, so they, the, they, they knew both, about it. But they'd already started working on their book in 2001. Okay. And it's always another, it'll be out next year, it'll be out next year. And now we're finally supposed to get 
part two in a couple of years. Well, and I, yeah, I did. <laughs> I talked to Rick Turley last March or April uh, 20, 2019. Yeah. He told me it would be about two more years, so hopefully it's going to be next year. Well, <laughs> well, well, we'll see. Whatever it is, it's just going. I, I make a joke in my notes here that um, th this volume should be called uh, the cover up. You know, it, volume one ought to be called uh, the cover story, and volume two ought to be called the cover up continues. And this is a cover-up that's been going on for 163 years. And how much money has the church spent on their cover-up in the 21st century? Well, they have a lot more money than you do, so. They definitely do. <laughs> and they have spent... Well, I do have a question about that, because... So, Massacre at Mountain Meadows was published in 2006. And I know that... Uh, no, 2008. 2008, thank you. So, 2008... And I know that Turley has come out with those two red books. Um, I should have brought them, but those are those talk about the court cases, and they're it's basically a documentary history. It's not a narrative at all. Not um, at all. And so um, I've read it. It's pretty dry reading, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. because there's a lot of court and legalese, and I'm not a legal expert. But but so I my guess question is. Get well, I, I, I yeah. remember at the book signing um, at Benchmark Books a few years ago, whenever that was, LaJean Carruth is one of the people who is the only people, one of the six people in the world that can read Pittman shorthand. Apparently this was recorded in Pittman shorthand. Parts of it. Yeah. And so there's the Borman transcript and then there's the Rogerson transcript that historians have relied on for a long time. And I remember for a fact that Lucine said that she would be working on the actual court transcript, which no one has ever seen before, um, before she transcribed it. And she said that the Rogerson and the Borman transcripts were flat out contradicted what the, what the court records said. So do you give Turley and Lucine Carruth, I'm trying to remember who the other one, was it Janice Johnson, I believe it was, do you give them credit for at least taking, giving us more accurate records than, say, you had when you did your book in 2002? Smoke and mirrors. Okay. That's what we're getting. You may get what's, what's in the incomprehensible original transcript, but those were all filtered through um, prejudice sources of one sort or another. And I, I, I got to give LeGene credit for rescuing a lot of really weird stuff <laughs> and very interesting stuff and valuable stuff. It's not the transcript of the Mountain Meadows trials. No, I it's, spent it's an not. entire day uh, mimeographing the typescript of the Cook typescript of the Borman transcripts. And they were all the records of the file is kept for Judge Borman. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, out of this, I'll be able to get all kinds of good stuff, like a, a, a chronology, when it starts, what happens. And I, you'll note, too, that in this book, Juanita Brooks had access to those same typescripts. What does she say about them? Nothing. Not a word. <laughs> and that's my take on... Um, What the of what the transcripts are worth. Nothing. They're worthless. They're, they're all about, it's a liar's festival. It's all these people denying that they were involved in the massacre, who we know were involved in the massacre. They start out deciding they're going to convict John D. Lee, the Federals, and then they decide, no, we're going to cut a deal with the Mormons, and we're going to get a Mormon jury to convict John D. Lee. And that happens, too. But... Whatever secrets were told in the Lee trial are really best perceived in this book, which is by a somewhat crackpot historian named Robert Kent Fielding. But these are the Tribune reports, the daily newspaper reports 
of the trials of John D. Lee. Uh -huh. And they were, part of those reports were taken by Brigham Young's nephew. And when you say the Tribune, is that the Salt Lake Tribune or does that refer to Salt Lake else? Tribune? Yeah. Okay. So I, and I couldn't make heads or tails of the trials and what went on until I read this. And the, the newspapers are now easily accessible and they're really, uh, it, they're really valuable. But did you, did you learn anything from those red books from, from Turley? That you didn't know before. The red, all the, those red books. I learned that that is they don't know. <laughs> you know, I've I've done. These are documentary histories. Uh -huh. This is Kingdom in the West. There are sixteen of them, and I tried to revolutionize documentary history. You can pull this out and put it in a Kingdom in the West section, and what I tried to do was use documents to tell stories and put together enough connecting narrative to make that work. And some of these books, I believe, do that very well. And I would point to one of them, which you own, which is volume 12, Innocent Blood, okay. Essential Narratives of the Mountain Meadows Massacre. And this presents documents and tells a story, too. And I also promise up front in the introduction that I will keep all my conclusions for the end, which I can't, I don't do. And that, that was a major foul up on my part. But the essential documents are there. And what they put into their two volumes are not essential documents. And you know what else? How, who, was, who, got, who got to read that assembly before it was published? Me! I've never been asked to read anything by Oxford University Press, which is really a, a suspect operation. <laughs> but uh, the Oklahoma paid me a lot of money to uh, read it, and I wrote a long, something like a 20-page recommendation. On, Here's how you can make this better. You can tell the story. And they, didn't, they just rejected it. They didn't have time. Nobody had time to work on it. So they just printed the raw stuff. And I'm amazed you read, did you read the whole thing? I did. <laughs> Me and you are probably the only two people in <laughs> history who Well, I have a it. guy who used to be my ward. He's a lawyer, and he read the whole thing, too. So there's at least three of us. What did, what did he say? <laughs> he was really interested in it. Um, he, he, he said he learned a lot. So, but okay. I'm, I'm not a lawyer, so. <laughs> We're not lawyers. <laughs> but it could have been a lot better. <laughs> And do you know what else they did? How, how come Oklahoma published it? I don't know. It cost the, the church money. The church had to subvent it. Subvention is a nasty word for pay to publish. Huh. Vanity press stuff. <laughs> and I've never gotten paid much for what I published, but I have gotten paid. <laughs> Oh, man. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with historian Will Bagley. In our next conversation, we'll get more into the details of the massacre and talk about a story that doesn't make much sense. Why did people in Cedar City send a rider 200 miles north to Brigham Young to ask what to do to help some settlers from Arkansas? Word comes to your town that there are Indians attacking a wagon train. What do you do? You go, oh, we better send a letter 250 miles away and wait for a response which is going to take quite a long time and maybe those Indians will be able to kill all those people. Well, that's not what would happen in your typical frontier community. Hey, I just wanted to mention one more thing. This interview I had with Will was exactly one month ago today, September 4th. And about two weeks ago, he suffered a series of strokes. So this is likely the very last interview. I know some of you may know this if you follow the comments, some of you don't. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. So uh, we wish Will the best. And uh, he's going to be in a nursing home for a while or, or something like that, long-term facility. Um, he has lost some of his memories. But uh, it sounds like he's a lot the same old Will that you, that you see here 
at times too so anyway will just wanted to say you know good luck and and hope uh hope everything goes well with your recovery for those of you who are interested in the entire interview uncut without any interruptions sign up at patreon.com slash gospel tangents and you can hear the entire interview for just five dollars a month also, we have other tiers. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe on our website at gospeltangents.com, click on the yellow subscribe button and you can uh, subscribe for $10. You can also do that on Patreon and uh, get a PDF transcript. We've also got uh, some other ones uh, for $15 and $20 if you'd like to get those as well. If you're interested in individual transcripts, go to Amazon.com and do a search for Gospel Tangents Interview and you can see our past interviews there in paperback form. So uh, just check out Gospel Tangents. We're always updating those. For the latest updates on Facebook, go to Facebook.com slash Gospel Tangents and you can see our latest updates there. We're also on Twitter at Gospel Tangents. Of course, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts at tinyurl.com slash gospeltangents. And please uh, give us a five-star rating uh, for those of you who listen to the audio only. So once again, thanks for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript. And over here, we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again.